It's Kevin O'Brien. I'm here today in Berlin at Tech Open Air with Yancy Strickler, the co-founder of Kickstarter, the Brooklyn-based, world's largest crowdfunding platform. You spoke earlier today and you gave a pretty bullish assessment of Berlin as a startup uh, hub. Uh, can you speak about that? Why are you bullish on Berlin? Well, I think this is an interesting opportunity and moment for the life of the Berlin ecosystem. You know, after the UK's actions two weeks ago, it seems likely that the gravitational force will shift to Berlin from London. And that creates yeah, an interesting set of opportunities and challenges. Uh, my guess is that there will be a large influx of money and entre entrepreneurs coming to Berlin. I think Berlin has an opportunity to build products that advocate for the rights of individuals and of users and to create a more decentralized web. Uh, and I think that's something that the internet sorely needs and that this is an opportunity uh, for Berlin to really have a clear identity and I, and I think answer a, a, a real need on, on the internet today. So you really do see uh, Berlin, Germany benefiting from the Brexit? Yeah, I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't know anything. My armchair punditry would say, yeah, that would be my guess. Kickstarter uh, has, through its efforts, raised about two and a half billion dollars for 110,000 projects yeah. around the world. You now have a German language operation. Um, at what stage is crowdfunding in Germany compared to the U.S.? Uh, definitely an earlier stage but also on the ascent. So we've been alive in Germany for about 14 months. So far it's been 16 million euro that's been pledged to projects. You know, if I compare this, like it probably took the first two and a half to three years for this much money to transact in the US. So certainly it's been a quicker growth out of the gate, although Kickstarter is more established now. But most interestingly, the success rate of German projects in terms of meeting their funding goal has been increasing throughout the year. Uh, we were certainly very aware of uh, the more conservative nature of a German consumer. Um, and yeah, on Kickstarter you're supporting the very early stages of an idea, which is often speculative. You know, you're not purchasing something that's ready to be shipped to you, you're supporting the creation of something new and um, there's a huge variety of things that can happen after that. Uh, but as Kickstarter has proven, there's a lot of exciting things in that model. Uh, you mentioned uh, patronage as part of the model. Uh, the people who um, contribute to Kickstarter, uh, do they receive an investment return, or is this a charitable contribution? It's not an investment. Uh, I'd say it's more closer to charitable than an investment. On Kickstarter, there is no financial upside. It's simply, here's an idea I'd love to do. I'd love to do it with the community. People support me. We'll all make this happen together. Uh, and so people are supporting ideas just because they're excited about them, not because they think it might be lucrative for them. And we think that lowers the bar for what's possible. We've also done a big study in terms of what happens after funding happens. So what percent of, pro of projects actually are able to follow through and complete and do what they promised. Uh, and there was a study put together by the University of Pennsylvania last year that found that just 9% of projects failed to deliver what was promised. Just 9? Just 9. So 1 out of 10 okay. ends up something goes wrong or they got in over their head. Uh, but this is a system and a model that works phenomenally well and that we are relying on the intelligence of the public to choose what ideas to support. Uh, and are trusting those creators to respect that support and to follow through. And, and again, nine out of ten times they're doing that. Nancy Strickler, thanks a lot for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you.